internet. So two days in a row driving, <laughs> it's, uh, it's where it fits. The, today I was working on the year for the congregation, which means trying to look at all the texts and get a big picture for what's gonna go on. And I didn't get through all of it, but I mean, I got all the way into like Lent even, which is, is a long way for August, right? What was fun about it, or what's interesting about it, is I'm doing something slightly unorthodox. Not too much, I don't think, but, but just a touch. And, and that is, I'm making use of the Old Testament very heavily. And I'm doing so, eh, maybe in a little bit of a unique way. There's a, there's a resource from Concordia Publishing House called the Old Testament Lectionary, or something like that. It was released many years ago. It's hard to find. You can't even download it. It's ridiculous. They only got it on CD, but whatever. Um, bought it for a second time. Uh, and uh, basically, it tries to take you through the whole arc, story arc of the Old Testament in a year, which is a really cool thing to do. So that's going to be our focus this year uh, at St. Paul here in Rockford. We're going to go with that the big arc as the main Sunday preaching story text. And... The cool thing about it, by the way, is it's connected to the church here. So it's not like full-on, just radical sermon series. It's all tied to the church here and the holidays really, really well. Although I'm I'm tweaking it a whole bunch, too, to make it even better. And then uh, in, uh, in our Bible study Sunday mornings, we're going to get the rest of the story. So you can't possibly get all the good, good juice. So we're going to go back and pick on the stuff that is maybe the lesser-known stories or... It's all lesser known these days, right? And you know, pieces that you wanna, you don't wanna miss, snake on a pole, that kind of thing. And uh, uh, yeah, there's one other piece of that somehow. Somehow, oh, you know that's bad. I didn't get a, I didn't get an Advent series. I got a Lenten series, which is pretty cool. Where we picked up. So right about Lent, you're transitioning from Joshua into uh, Saul and through the judges. And so it's really neat. So right during that time then, you have space for some extra stories. So we're basically doing Judges during the midweek Lenten services, which is pretty cool. Joshua and Judges. And then, you know, uh, during the, the, the week, ma main days, you have an initial, you know, Jericho one. Uh, but before that, it was really cool. So you have like uh, for the first Sunday of Lent, when Jesus is in the wilderness, facing um, uh, facing the devil now this wasn't there I did this today but the text is gonna be Moses and the people of Israel defeating Og and Sihon in the wilderness before they go up to enter the promised land which is pretty cool so you, you have and then um, is it right with that and the week before that that's right the week before that's transfiguration in which Moses is saying another prophet like me will arise right so you have then Jesus transfigured, the other prophet who's arisen, who you have to listen to. And then you have Jesus in the desert defeating, you know, the king of the age. Yeah, really neat. Um, oh, so much fun. I love our liturgy. I love our, our lectionary. I love our church calendar. And you might say, well, why are you changing it? Well, no, I don't, I, I don't think I am. I think I'm building on it. And uh, letting it do what it does. It's got so much in it. And there's so many cool ways to make it useful for teaching, reproof, correcting, training, all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, so you have defeating the kings in the wilderness, first week of Lent, and then, oh, what's the second week? I can't remember, but then you get into, by the time you get to La Terre, it's really cool. So it's like kind of sad stuff, or not sad, but like you're in Judges, uh, what is it? I can't remember now. I think the second week is just Hey, we're in Judges. Each man does as he sees fit. That's really bad. Doesn't go so well. And then you got week three is something in Judges that's not so good. What was it? I cannot recall. Maybe it wasn't in Judges. But then week four, La Tere, which is like, um, that's like the, the Gaudete of Lent. So Gaudete is the third Sunday in Advent, which... It's pink, right? Oh, 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 rose. Yeah, of course, it's rose. Okay, whatever. It's pink. <laughs> uh, and it's a day of rejoicing. And whatever the, the songs about the candles or what they taught you as kids, it, it's all wrong if they don't tell you that the, the pink is for joy. <laughs> because that goes back to the old intro it, uh, rejoice in the Lord always, Gaudete. 
It's because, I've told you guys this before on this channel, but it's all right. It's because both Lent and Advent are seasons of repentance, and the church was kind of like, yeah, that'll get kind of old and painful, and it'll just be too much, and we'll, we'll despair, so we need some joy in there. So they put in pink, Gaudete, and then they put in pink in Lent, Latere, which is the fourth Sunday of Lent, which also can be rose slash pink if you so care to, to do that. We don't have Lenten wreaths for candles and all that, so you don't usually notice it. So you're in this like judges period, right? Whereas like each one's doing as they see fit, fit, and things aren't working, so it's, it's Lent, it's painful, it's ouch. And then Latere comes around, and guess what we get to do? We do Ruth. We do the Kinsman Redeemer. Oh, it's great. It's so great. And then uh, for the fifth, fifth Sunday in Lent, Samuel, birth of Samuel, call of Samuel, sixth Sunday in Lent, there isn't one. It is in fact Palm Sunday, the day of false fruit, the anointing of Saul, king of Israel, and the rejection of God as their king. And uh, that sets up perfectly, which was in the original lectionary for Easter Sunday. Oh my. Yeah, David and Goliath defeating the undefeatable great giant enemy of Israel uncircumcised dog with five smooth stones who who would have seen it coming almost like someone rising from the dead yeah that's cool don't tell me that ain't cool I don't care what historic lectionary you use that's great good for you you don't have to use this but you know you can tell me it's heretical but don't tell me it ain't cool that's super cool so that was my day I have a question I want to answer but I want to be able to read it to you guys and, and whatnot, and I gotta go grocery shopping with my wife in 10 minutes. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I hope, I hope you're all having a good one.